David Ediger. We'll be bringing you tonight in action. Let's go ahead and take a look at our comparison as Ottawa comes into the game at 5-5 five and 10-6 five and and overall. The Blue Jays one game behind Ottawa in the Sandys at 4-6, and 7-9 overall. The last time out, uh, Ottawa got beat by the number, I believe, sixth-ranked team in the country right now, Southwestern College, 95-75, and Tabor with a big win over at Bethany, 88-66. And... Just a little bit about Tabor right now. They've won three of their last four, including a big overtime win here against McPherson College. Ottawa comes into tonight's contest in fifth, tied for fifth with four separate teams. Ottawa, Sterling, Bethany, Vangel are all five, six, seven, and eight in the conference right now. York is at four and five. Friends at four and six. Tabor at four and six. St. Mary three, seven. Avila one and nine, and Bethany one and nine. So the Blue Jays, uh, Isaiah, are in a critical game here. As you know, the top eight get into the tournament, and right now Tabor just sitting basically a game out of that behind a few teams. So what are you looking for tonight in this matchup with the Blue Jays and the and the Braves? Um. I think the Blue Jays need to um, definitely attack the Braves. I think the Blue Jays need to attack them on uh, offense and just make plays and take the take the plays that they give them. Well, let's go ahead and look at tonight's starting lineups. Four first for the Ottawa Braves. They bring in uh, an experienced group: DeAndre Bugage, junior from Gray, Louisiana via Hins, Heinz Community College, a 5'4 junior. Number 10, Peyton Kaiser, he's a guard, 6'3 junior from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Another transfer from Clark College. Angok Angyon, that's how they say it on the pronunciation sheet. That's a tough one, Isaiah. We may struggle with that one all night. We may just call him number 11, a 6'9 forward. A freshman from South Australia via Barton County Community College. Cameron Woods, number 15, a 6'3 senior out of Tuxarkana, Texas. Another transfer. And number 22, Jaden Hibbert, a 6'6 junior out of Woodbridge, Virginia, transferred from the, right down the road from Ottawa, Division II school, Wash, Washburn University. And for the Blue Jays, let's go ahead and meet their starting lineups. Pretty much the same and has been for quite a while. We have number zero, Caleb Crane transfer in from Louisiana for the Blue Jays. He's been on the point for the Blue Jays all year and just done an outstanding job. Left-handed guard, very strong, especially around the rim. And we also have number two, Jack Voth from Wilmington, North Carolina out of Hoggard High School. He's actually played three years down the road here at Bueller High School. And one of his best, probably his best friend, Jake Proctor, number four, a guard from Heston, Kansas. 3A Player of the Year last year. Thatcher McClure, a forward out of McKinney, Texas. Played on an outstanding high school team down there. He's a sophomore. And rounding that out, another transfer for the Blue Jays. Kenyon Holcomb out of Texas. Excuse me, Tomball, Texas transfer from Cameron University, number 15. Lately, you know, Kenyon's really found his, his game a little bit. You know, last time we had a big win here, McPherson's very tough post player was giving up some inches, but really knocked Camp Kenyon around a little while, and, and uh, Kenyon figured out how to use his length very well, did an outstanding job defensively, and just did a great job. Thatcher, of course, is one of the, he's our leading scorer right now. Uh, does a great job for us. He's a sophomore, so basically Tabor starting two freshmen, two sophomores, and two juniors that transferred in. So this team is starting to gel a little bit. They're starting to find their groove, winners of three of their last four. So it's starting to kind of, everybody's finding their role. And you know how important that is on a team, Isaiah, when everybody accepts their role and kind of gets going. Right. So right now the Blue Jays are going to finish warming up. As you see, you see us on there, that's not the best picture in the world, but uh, we're on there now. So, uh, yeah, we're ready to go this evening, and we're going to go ahead and take a break. And we'll be back here with the PA announcer, Nate Howard, here in just a few minutes. 
Greensboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. And welcome back to Tabor College. And we again, we're set up for a matchup here is Ottawa here at Tabor. And again, Isaiah and myself, David Ediger, the AD here at Tabor, will be bringing you the action this evening. Let's go ahead and take a look at the people responsible for bringing you this production. Rory Cameron will be on the wide. Uh, well, actually, Ra Raul is on the wide cam for this game, and Valdisa on the hero cam. And our production crew, Mike Jameson and Valencia Andal, will be switching replays in Naki or Dizadi. And we have several people down on press row and everything. We'll get to mention them sometime this evening as we move along. So we're going to go ahead and shoot it down to PA announcer Nate Howard for our opening prayer and anthem. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we thank the Tabor College Athletic Pet Band under the direction of Chris Teichler for that beautiful national anthem. Just a couple of uh, notes to, to make note of as the scoring leaders for Tabor, Thatcher McClure at 15.9, Jaden Hibbett, 
for Ottawa at 21.3. Thatcher is also the lead rebounder for the Blue Jays, 7.3. And there's that name again, Eng Gok Engyon, 10.1. Assist, Caleb Crane for the Blue Jays, 2.4. DeAndre Buttage at 4.7. Blocks, Kenyon Holcomb, we talked about him a little bit ago, 1.6. And Engyon at 1.9 for Ottawa. Crane also leads the Blue Jays with steals at 1.1, and Cameron Woods is a leaderboard for Ottawa at 1.7. Thatcher McClure shooting 49.7% from the floor to lead the Blue Jays. Ang Yong at 56.4. Both leads Tabor at 38.7 with a three-point percentage, and Jaden Hibbett for Ottawa at 53%. And I'll tell you what, Isaiah, the other night I was watching because I stayed home, but watched our guys on the stream, and, and Jack hit a couple of threes that were seven feet behind the line. That's yeah. no lie, right in front of Ottawa's bench, two in a row, nothing but the bottom of the net. So when he gets rolling, uh, look out, because he can really knock them down. As we mentioned earlier, critical game here for the Blue Jays. A little critical stretch, won three of their last four to put them in a position to be just a game out of that eighth spot. And so if they can win tonight, that would you know tie them with St. or with Ottawa. And then going into St. Mary next week or this Saturday. Now the weather's got me all thrown off with rescheduled things, but this Saturday going up to St. Mary, who is sitting three and seven, and sure be nice to get a little bit of space there before we head up there. If you just joined us and you didn't watch the women's game, they pulled out a, a nail biter this evening and they pulled away from Ottawa finally at the end. Ottawa gave us a battle, but the ladies won this evening. 60 to 53, I was just looking that up. I couldn't remember, but by seven. So good win for the ladies. We're just about to get underway as we see the Blue Jay huddle there from up top and Tabor is ready to go. Blue Jay fans, let's make some noise. It's game time here at Hillsborough. So it'll be McClure and Ann Young jumping it up for their prospective teams. We have our officials for tonight's contest. Jake Kuhlman throwing the ball up. Skyler Hill and Trent Kohler. Thank those guys for their work. So our guys can, can have a good competitive game out here. Turnover by the Braves as Proctor swings it over to Crane on the right wing. Three-pointer on the way, no good. And that's going to be off of Ottawa. Good job by Holcomb to knock that ball off of two of the Braves to keep it here. Crane to key it in for the Blue Jays. A little cross screen for Holcomb. Ball will go to Kenyon, and Kenyon is a, is a good three-point shooter. People don't really know that about him being so tall. He likes to step out and shoot the three. Jack Voth with, Voth with the nice drive to the basket up and in. Braves working it around, going to the basket. And the rebound thrown right to Crane. So Caleb uh, Tabor has an advantage, and McClure will shoot the three. That's up and in from the left wing. As we see number 15, Cameron Woods went down on that drive to the bucket. So definitely hope he's okay. Don't want anybody injured. Number 25 checking in for them in just a minute. I'll have a little trouble to start with here. Another turnover by the Braves. Proctor looking to shoot the three. Couldn't quite get it off, so he gets to McClure. He'll step back and shoot a three, and it's good. And McClure on fire to start early. 8-0 Tabor. Timeout Braves. As Coach Seibenthal is not happy, he's really getting on his team. We'll just keep it here. And Isaiah, what do you... What are you liking so far from the Blue Jays on both ends of the floor? Um, they started out with really good tempo. Tabor did. Uh, they, were, they attacked the basket from the very first second. 
and they're just doing a good job of, of capitalizing on their opportunities. Yeah, I agree. Tabor playing some good defense and causing some turnovers there by Ottawa and then converting them on the other end. So Tabor up to a quick 8-0 lead. Tabor has traditionally, the last, maybe not against Bethany, but the last several games have really started pretty slow. Um, but they have really found a nice gear to start in this evening. And a nice move there by Angyong. Puts the Braves on the board. 8-2, Crane with the ball. As we saw Fields check in for the Braves to replace the injured Wood. Woods, Proctor with a drive and almost goes in and out. Foul on number 22, Jaden Hibbett. That's his first. So Proctor will be shooting two for the Blue Jays. And Proctor was key down the stretch in the McPherson win as he just stepped in cool as could be and knocked down two free throws to put the Blue Jays up in overtime and kind of put that game finally away. Makes both there. Again, Proctor a freshman, but he started every game so far this year and doing a nice job so far this evening. Three-pointer on the way, no good. Holcomb pulls down the board quickly out to Proctor. Three on three, he's going to pull it out. A little bit of a mismatch there. He's going to pull up and shoot it over Yang, Anyang, and that was a good. Proctor through the hoop off the steal. <laughs> Proctor, I've noticed, has been getting a little more aggressive the last several games. Coach Seibenthal is, is going to set to put in a whole new group pretty much. He's got four guys ready to check in. Another turnover by the Braves, and Crane will go to the basket. That's a strength of his. He's very strong, gets to the rack really well. Blue Jays up 14-2. And, boy, we'll get a replay maybe on that. Proctor thought he was there in position and got shoved down, but he must have been moving. Good. You see the replay there of Crane, of Crane and his strength going to the basket. So it looks like Ottawa's trying to get to the rack quite a bit. Tabor did a nice job of clogging things up. That should have been an offensive foul there. He cleared away with the forearm pretty good. up a little off there, a little further away there, didn't quite get all the way to the basket. We see him shovel it back to number 30, Ferguson. Zambrano now controlling on that far side. Ferguson looking for a double screen up top. He's gonna kick it to the corner. Three pointer by number three, Buggage, no good. And Coach Warren says, let's hold it up here a minute. Let's be sure we get a good basket. So James Oboba getting ready to check in and Cade Hemmert for the Blue Jays. We see Thatcher come in and turned over. That's one thing he struggled just a bit with at times this year. Sometimes he gets himself in some traffic. But both with a good take to the rack. 16-2 Blue Jays. McClure guarding down low. Nice block, but we can't track it down, so it goes back out to the Braves. Now the lefty Ferguson, no good. That one's way over. Catches Holcomb by surprise. And Isaiah Caleb looks a little gassed. He's just now the half court, so. Uh, 
And he's stripped going into the basket. So Proctor's going to be back to play defense by himself here. And a nice job. But McClure can't quite crowd the rebound. A little hectic right now. Fields pulls it out and gets it over to Ferguson. Ferguson back to Fields for a deep three. That's going to barely nick the bottom of the rim. And McClure going to come down with it. I tell you, you can see Crane's already sweating like crazy out there. I tell you, <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. come by the gym and he'll be working out. It takes him about 10 minutes to get a good sweat worked up. He works extremely hard. Deep three by Voth. That's good. As he can really bury that deep three when he gets going. 19-2. So Tabor. And not a wise decision by Ferguson going in there trying to take it to the much larger Holcomb as we see goes in here and Kenyon you see a nice job of using his length was we got a whole change while they're subbing here we got some some different people in for the Blue Jays but we talk about our freshman Isaiah and you, and you play baseball here right. and no matter how good you were in high school when you come into this level talk a little bit about the difference and just in sports in general, for a freshman to try to, what all do they got to try to figure yeah. out? Yeah, I think there's a lot more um, that you have to learn mentally as a freshman going into college sports because it doesn't matter who you were or how good you were in high school because every single other guy is the best guy from their town. And so I think um, as a freshman, like it can be really overwhelming if you are playing with older guys, but um, just that change in taking the game to the next level mentally is it's very different very well, different from high school yeah, and you hit on a big thing the middle part and not only the middle part and that's probably the biggest thing like you said it's also physical the speed yep. all that stuff yeah. is, is just completely different yeah now you're playing against 22 and 23 year olds yeah. instead of 17 and 18 year olds you know and age wise and, and I've told some people who have asked me about our team I said you know it's still boys against men right now you know because yeah. it is I mean that's just how it is we're pretty young but I tell you what we've we've really grown a lot we've seen now out on the floor yeah for the go ahead oh I was just saying yeah I like it like um, the direction they're headed I think they're they're doing a good job of slowly continuing to get better well and our depth is really at as we see number three yeah. Creed and Avery in the game now he started a lot of games last year and he's his role now is coming off the bench and but he's accepted that Jaden pull up jumper and that's his shot number five Jaden Miller he's just really done a great job for us really blossomed the last several games so there we've got a couple Boba I think got a piece of that maybe we we'll have a foul and also Kate Hemmert and James Aboba Jack Voth Creelan Avery and Jaden Miller all in the game is that foul is on Creelan Avery I didn't know if they were going to call that on Creelan or for who for sure. Hemmert. Nice defense. Hey, that's just a tough shot yeah. by number 22, Hibbett. His Cade will come in and he'll do all the dirty work. He'll guard whoever. He'll get on the floor. He'll defend extremely hard. He'll rebound. And he'll throw in some shots. And so McClure set check back in for the Blue Jays. Aboba's going to be off the glass. I don't think that's what he planned there, Isaiah, but hey, it would count. So 23-7, the Blue Jays. Now that's the one thing I just can't get over as a former coach especially is Defensively, if you move a guy off the block a foot, it's going to be a foul. Yep. And the offensive guy can just back a defender down and back him, back him, and just keep knocking him clear into the basket. And it's never a foul on the offensive guy. And I just, it's its nothing against these three men calling. That's just the way the game's called. So I'm not, I'm not picking on this crew at all. But it just, it just drives me crazy. Uh, you're displacing the defensive guy. You're just knocking him clear across the lane, and that's not a foul. I don't understand that. Yep. But that's the way the game is called nowadays, and... That does not favor us because we, we got some length, but we're not, we don't have a lot of beef inside. Avery setting the ball in for the Blue Jays over to Miller. 
Nice cut there. Boba out for the three. He can make that shot. A little long that time. Rebound over to the Braves and Woods. So we see Woods back on the floor for Ottawa. That's a good sign for them. Turn around jumper, no good. There's a jump ball, good job. There's Hemmert sticking his nose in there. Good job by Cade. But right now, Onyong is giving us some fits because of his length. Right there, kept a ball alive, just simply out jumped Tabor. No foul there, just out jumped us and kept it alive. McClure, one of the step back three, wasn't going to go. Now Boba with it. Out to Miller. Miller to the basket. Miller just outstanding job at Franz a couple of games ago. He really kept us in the game the first half. Him and James both did outstanding off the bench. And tonight continuing that play. Skip pass over to number 10, Kaiser. That one goes in and out. Avery now pushing up for the Blue Jays. Nice job by Creeland. You know, Isaiah, I think our depth is going to come into play. It looks like Ottawa's already kind of subbed everybody a couple of times. Yeah. And you saw, uh, you know, we saw... Caleb with uh, getting gas there early. So how, how important is our depth going to be, do you think, tonight? I think that will be really important, especially if they want to uh, just continue to score at the rate that they are. I think the depth is really important. Well, I'm not for sure what, you know, how Ottawa have not seen them play yet this year. So I, I, I'm, I've got a lot of confidence in our guys off our bench. You know, I don't know about theirs. Seems like Coach does because he subs quite a few. But we got our pretty much our starting lineup back out there now. Looks like Buggage at the line for his second one. So he makes both, bring the lead to 26 11. Here's a dunk. Could see that coming. <laughs> When Thatcher or yep. Kenya have the ball, they're going to dunk it if at all possible. <laughs> it don't matter who's in their way or what's going on. Good job by Caleb defensively. That good back door there by the Braves. Hibbet. No, this year at the beginning of the year, Caleb could have been Offensive Player of the Week. Didn't quite get it. But then the next week came right back and was Defensive Player of the Week. So Caleb can do, can do it all on both ends of the floor. Some Zambrano and Fields back on for the Braves, replacing Kaiser and Woods. Three pointer off the mark. But Fields with the offensive putback. Could have had to lob the Holcomb, but couldn't quite get it up that quick. Holcomb throws it out to Voth up top. Proctor now swings over to Caleb Crane. Crane the pull up 15 footer, good. Three-pointer off the mark there by Hibbett. Blue Jays up the court now. Heads up play there by Voth. McClure for three in the corner. That's going to be off. A little bit long. Good recovery by Crane. Three-point attempt by Zambrano. No good. Cleared by McClure. First half going by pretty quick, 8.20 left. We've got a timeout, Blue Jays. We'll take it with them. Be back in just a few minutes. 
Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. And welcome back to the campus of Tabor College here in Hillsborough, Kansas. We see our cheer squad bringing some pep to the game this evening. And we got the mascot there over there in the corner. And I was just talking with Isaiah. And Isaiah, you got two different huddles. You got Coach Warren in our huddle doing some strategy, and you got uh, Coach Ibenthal in their huddle trying to get them going. Right, right. <laughs> So sometimes you give some X's and O's, and sometimes you just chew a little tail for a little bit and uh, see how it works. So Braves coach has been at it for quite a while. He's in his ninth season there at Ottawa. And we have a turnover there by the Blue Jays, a little misread between McClure and Voth. Voth takes it right back. And he was going to dunk that one and missed it. Here comes a layup by Holcomb, no good. I'm going to call a jump ball. Tabor kind of gave it away there on the, on the possession, but got it back and then couldn't make it. So 31-15, 7.52 left here in the first half. Blue Jays, like you said, Isaiah, looking good out of the gate. It's hard to keep this pace up for an entire game. Right. So they're going to have to really – A traveling call. Good job by McClure. You know, Ottawa's going to make a run. We're going to have to play really good defense here to, you know, take care of the basketball and just stay on top. About an eight-footer there by McClure. Nice job by Thatcher. So Thatcher, 10 points here early for the Blue Jays. He's come out looking to score and doing a nice job. Braves working the ball around top. Little floater by Buggage, no good. And Proctor brings it down off the rebound from McClure, and he passes over to McClure now. He's looking to get it back to Proctor, swinging around to, Hulk, or to Caleb Crane. He dumps it to Holcomb, and that's knocked away from behind. It's a good defensive play there by Hibbet, or excuse me, by Fields. Three-pointer good by Zambrano. So Tabor could have went up 35-15 right there. Had a 20-point lead instead. Five-point swing there brings it just to 15, 33-18. Blue Jays on top. Just six and a half to go. Three-pointer good by Holcomb. Hemmert set to check back in for the Blue Jays. The next opportunity, kick out for Zambrano again. That one's going to be long. Good board by McClure. I might give Caleb a hard time. It sure looks like he's gassed a lot tonight. I don't, I don't know if he's just playing that hard or if he ate too much over the break and uh, what, but I might give him a hard time. He's, he, he's such a good player for us. So Hemmert back in and giving... McClure, a break. Kaiser and Woods back on the floor for the Braves. So Caleb keying it in to Voth. Three-pointer again. Good board by Hemmert. Three Braves around there and Cade. And look who gets the board. Proctor now has the three. We just need to settle down and reset. There's a shot. Nope. Drive instead for Voth. Looks like he's hit there. So he'll go shoot two. Foul number, number one, Zambrano. That's his first. That's his first. Team second. 
So Voth will be at the line to shoot two. First one up and good. As A.J. Hoff will replace Zambrano. It's kind of the story of, of those season so far from the free throw line. He usually shoots 50% right now. He makes one, misses one, it seems like. He, we should back him up to the three-point line somewhere and let him shoot him from there, maybe. Great three-point shooter. Has that one in the corner. Good by A.J. Hoff. 16-point lead for the Blue Jays. 5.25 to go here in the opening half. As Ottawa's not going to go away. The JV game, we got up 32 to 13 and end up trailing and had to come back for the win. Hemmert for three, he can make that shot a little short. Be good to get a stop here for the Blue Jays. Three porter by Onyong, no good. Not sure where Jack was trying to throw that one, but that's going to be an offensive foul on number 22, Hibbett. Proctor has drawn a couple of those. I know the last several games here. He gets back, gets set right outside that arc. So he's done a nice job defensively as well. Coach Seibenthal doesn't agree with that call. Double screen up top for Crane. And that couldn't quite see what happened there for sure. And there's another one. So there's two in a row by Proctor. So we got a freshman drawing two charges in a row. That's, that's a real easy call. The last one was easy, I thought. But that one was really easy, so. Tabor hadn't scored a couple of trips, but neither has the Braves. We've been able to maintain that six-point lead as we see Miller and Aboba coming back in. Proctor now going to shoot one, and it's just off, just a shade short. That's going to be out of bounds off the foot of Anyong. So miscue there by the Braves as we see Crane and Holcomb getting a breather, and Aboba and Miller back on for the Blue Jays. We have another timeout here, a full timeout. We'll take it with them. Be back in a minute. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Sooner or later, you... And we're back here at Tabor College as we would like to recognize a few more people as we said our production crew earlier. We have some of our men's soccer team out taking care of the floor for us today. So we really appreciate that. We have David Loomis, our SID, and Rory Cannon, an SID slash strength conditioning GA on the stats. Del Shuey on our book. We have Kat on the shot clock as usual along with Daryl Canole on the panel. Sasha helping him out. We have Ollie Cannon doing our play, our clock clock. Nate Howard on the PA and Brianne McGinnis on our replay. So things are rolling well. We're thank, thankful to all those people. Takes quite a crew to put on a game, and we really appreciate it. Proctor now jump stop, pulls up, shoots it, and that ball just in and out. And Jake just can't get one of those to fall. Looks really good off his hand. It's just a little short, rolling around. Braves now controls number 10, Kaiser, pull up. And he's short. And look, Jaden Miller, the shortest guy on the floor, pulls down the rebound. 
You know, I was watching him warm up at Franz, and he can really get out. He can get up and dunk it about any way you want. Yep. He really gets off the floor. So neither team been able to put the ball in the basket here for a while. You know, they list Miller at six foot. I'm not sure if that's true or not, to tell you the truth. I don't know if he's six foot. I think he might not quite make the six foot, but we'll give it to him. Good job by Boba to come over and help. Ottawa didn't track that down. This is going to be over to... Blue Jays just missed another layup, so that could be another charge. You don't call that one a block. That's pretty good defense there by Proctor. So McClure back on the floor, replacing a Boba. Really got to kind of watch. And Young kind of got his arms up pretty good there on the ooh, uh, on the screen, and that's a foul by Hemmert as we let Buggage knock one down. So now all of a sudden it's 13, could be 12. They make this free th free throw, and Crane will replace Proctor. So Cade knew right away that was a mistake because he points to himself and he sees he's all upset himself. 15 for the Braves for the checks Braves in Woods. 15, He'll get, give Hibbett a break. So Buggage at the line to shoot one to try the four point play. And that's good. So as I just say, nobody has scored for a bit. They score four and cut the lead to 12. So Tabor has got, we said they'd make a run and we'd have to withstand it, play some good defense. So we need to be sure we do that. And we need to get a bucket. Miller coming around. 10 on the shot clock. Step back from the free throw line. Banks it in. So Boba and Miller both use the backboard from 15 feet. Yep. Uh, but hey, it counts. And I think if... A.J. Hoff goes to the rim. That's going to be a layup there. He stopped early. He definitely had Blue Jays out of position and on his hip, but settled for the 15-footer. So the lefty Crane pulls it over to Jack Voth. And Coach Warren is wanting the same call there, and I didn't see what happened for sure. If there was contact or not, I was watching the flight of the ball. So people on either side are going to be upset with officials a lot of times, but they get the call right most of the time. They, mm -hmm. they, they do, and they're usually pretty consistent, and that's what you ask for. McClure now handles it out top. Up to the rim, no good. Good hustle by Holcomb. He throws it back to McClure, tries to dunk that and doesn't get it to go down. But you like the aggressiveness of the Blue Jays. Another three-pointer there by Hoff. Now suddenly brings the lead down to 11. One minute to go here in the half. Mentally, it's going to be big for the Blue Jays to at least maintain a double-digit lead. When you're right. up 20 or almost 20, and all of a sudden it's single digits, that's not what you want. And Miller, 41-28, and he's going to draw a T. That's twice he's kind of made a motion after the... He's just got to calm down. It's good being excited, but they're kind of clamping down on a lot of that. DeAndre 
And that's really a killer because now listen, they're going to get two free throws and the ball. And Buggage brings them back to within the 11. So you figure one possession each way here to end the half. Be great if the Blue Jays could get a stop here and get a bucket to end the half. And there's the stop. Good defense by Caleb. So Ottawa will get one more possession if we would happen to miss or score, but they won't have much time. About four second differential, four and a half. Warren calls the play. Everybody's getting set where they need to be, eight, seven. Should have maybe been a foul there as Crane tried to dribble in and definitely got hit. No whistle. Blue Jays up 41-30. We'll be back here in just a little bit. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. 
Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Iton Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at itonagency.com. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. 
Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Welcome back to Tabor College. This is Isaiah Cohen, and we are back in the gymnasium as the score is 40 to 31, and the Blue Jays are leading at halftime. I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at um, some of the halftime stats. Um, it looks like Tabor has 20 rebounds uh, to Ottawa's 22 in the first half. Ottawa has five assists, Tabor has three assists, and Ottawa has 13 turnovers, and Tabor only has five in that first half, and then looks like Ottawa has five fouls, and Tabor has drew seven. Um, but if you go ahead and look over at their um, their field goal percentage for Ottawa, it looks like they made 
uh, six of seven, so they're shooting at 85% from the line. And Tabor's three of four, shooting 75% from the line as well. We also look at the uh, leading scores for the Blue Jays. It looks like both Jack Both and Thatcher McClure are tied at 10 apiece. And they have um, Jaden Miller following close behind them with eight. If we look at the leading score for the Braves, we have DeAndre Bugic, um, number two. He has nine points. And that is a team high for Ottawa in the first half. I think the thing that stands out to me, though, of all the sets you read, is the turnovers. Right, right. They have, what do you say, 13, and we have five. Five, so that's big. That's, you know, eight eight possessions. That could be 16 points if you'd make just two pointers on every one, and we're up 11. So that's obviously the big big difference in the half, and Ottawa turned it over a lot at the beginning, and Tabor really got out to a great start. Yeah. <clears throat> but like we talked about, Ottawa's going to come back. They're going to make a run. And whether Tabor could, you know, weather that storm a little bit, and they have so far, maintaining that double-digit lead. The big, the other key is when we could have went up 20 and missed it, and they came down and made the bucket and went up right. 15. So, um, you know, that was big as well. So we'll see how the second half, half plays out. 41-30, Blue Jays on top here at home in this pivotal game. Again, if you're just joining us, Tabor one game behind Ottawa in the KCC standings. And there's just a whole slug of them, uh, five and five. Ottawa, Sterling, Bethel, Evangel, York, and McPherson both have only played nine games because of uh, a snow out and up in Nebraska. They couldn't couldn't get either get down or couldn't McPherson couldn't get up there. So this Tabor team again comes in tonight, winning three of four. Playing pretty well. Forty-one thirty here starts the second half as Proctor gets it into Crane. He hands off to Holcomb right back over, and he's going to try to go to the basket. And Caleb off the side of it. <clears throat> Looked like a little one-on-one -on -one play for Crane to start the half. Now the Blue Jays back in their offense, moving around the circle. And that's Holcomb for three, and that's good. So I believe Kenyon's two for two, I believe. I don't remember him missing one as you're checking the sheet there. I don't remember he missed, he missed a three in oh, the half, but maybe he did. two for three. Two for three. So he missed one the first half. But you know when your big guy's shooting two for three from the three-point line, that's okay. Good double there. Proctor runs him off the play. Bad pass. So out of bounds. So Ottawa starting half like they started the game. Got a turnover. And again, Tabor's defense flying around, causing them to turn it over. 44-30. And both to the rim. So Jack beats Kaiser off the dribble, and that time, good finish by both. And Kaiser returns the favor with a 15-footer up over Holcomb. McClure over to both. Back to Holcomb, now to Proctor. Proctor out to McClure, McClure thought about the three, kicks it right back to Proctor for three, it's gonna be a little long, and the board's pulled down by Hibbett. Braves running up the left side, Hibbett now crosses over in the middle, tries to shoot over, Proctor no good, kicks it out. And there's the dunk by Woods. So 46-34, Blue Jays still up by a dozen. Yeah. 
That's going to be a bucket by both. A foul by number 11. And Young. As we might be in a shade of contact there. That's not going to be a foul. The defender definitely off balance. That's a second foul on the big man for the Braves. He's six nine and long. Just he's not very heavy, but very athletic. That was a could have been a travel there. And Onyong follows up the miss by Kaiser. Blue Jays right back up the left side, up 13. McClure, he goes and just dunks it on everybody. I told you, Thatcher and Kenya are going to dunk it whenever they can. and That way, you know, you're not going to get it blocked. Now, see, right there, why is that not an offensive foul? I just don't understand that. He clearly knocked Kenya right. back about four feet. Then Holcomb gets back in the play and picks up the foul. First free throw up and in, 51-37. So McClure clears the board for Tabor. Crane swings it over to Holcomb. Trying to get into both as a mismatch. Good job by Crane to come by and knock that away. We couldn't quite track it down. You know, I've seen that called the foul every time this year when you go diving into somebody else's legs, even yeah. if you go after the ball. Called in our JV game earlier. Actually, two of these same officials called our JV game, the two on this side. The guy on the far side did not. That one's going to be long, 51-39. Tabor still up a dozen. Sure, what happened there? Maybe a little bump, but I think we slipped. Fouls on Taylor number zero, Caleb Craig. That's his first. Team second. Is there wanting the floor? Yeah, I think Coach was wanting a foul down here on our bench for a push, but I think Caleb just went down. And as you can see on the replay, he started losing his balance, and the auto guy might have bumped him just a shade, but that's definitely not a foul. Caleb on the way to the ground, losing his footing. 51-39, 15-40 to go. D3 by Buggage. That's no good. Rebound by Holcomb. Proctor now has it up top looking for a screen from Holcomb. Nope. Going to get it set back up, get the ball to Crane. Over to Proctor. Now Blue Jays working it around the perimeter. Good bucket by Holcomb. Nice move. Timeout by the Blue Jays. 30 second timeout. We'll keep it here. 30 second timeout. So, so far, Isaiah, the Blue Jays have actually widened their lead by two here over the first about five minutes of this half. So, what, yeah. do you, what are you seeing so far? Maybe comparisons to start the game or. What are you seeing so far why the Blue Jays are able to widen that lead by bucket? Um, I think they're still doing a good job on defense, and I think that um, they're still being consistent like they were from the jump, and um, Ottawa hasn't been very consistent. And they're still uh, having some turnovers. I think the uh, Blue Jays are just capitalizing on it, on mistakes and opportunities. Well, this Blue Jay team, and I've talked to Coach a little bit, I've talked to some of the players, when they play together, they're really pretty good. Right. When You know, kind of part of that newness and, and being young and trying to overcome and learn on the fly early in the year was 
we kind of had the tendency when we got behind a little bit or things started going not our way, we tried to make it all up individually. And it, well, I don't think it was anybody being selfish by, by purpose. It was just, you know, hey, boy, we're struggling. If somebody's got to make a play, I'll make the play. And then it just didn't work. We'd break down. And the first time I really saw us not do that was at Friends when uh, – we started to get give the lead away a little bit at friends, and instead of doing that, we stayed together. Yeah, and uh, and really came back again, and then retook the lead for good. And I think that really uh, gave gave some belief on our guys that when we play together, we're pretty good. Definitely, that helps team morale. And say there's got to be a foul. Nice job by Crane going in. And Anyang couldn't reach the ball and just swatted and knocked Crane to the bucket or to the floor. That's going to be his third. He's got to come out. As we see. Caleb Crane at the line, shooting two. Kloppenmaker getting ready to check in. Along with, looks like Fields, and I believe that is A.J. Hoff. As our floor guys have been busy tonight, they've uh, had to get out there and do some work. Buggage comes around the top, kind of one-on-one -on -one with Crane. And Crane's going to win that battle an awful lot. He's just stronger and just a great defensive player. Good jump shot. Two people on the floor, no whistle. We're going to play on. And Crane gets to the rim and doesn't convert. Ottawa back and Proctor trying to cut that off. And Braves going to grab a layup. 53-41. So Tabor was up 14, could have gone up 16, and now back down to 12. Both over to Holcomb. Now over to McClure, Pro Proctor up top. Holcomb gonna go to work here. A little right-handed scoop shot by Kenyon, no good. So now the Braves have an opportunity to get it down to 10 or 9. Miller and Aboba back on the floor, replacing Crane and Holcomb, going to give them a break. So that's the first subs of the half for the Blue Jays, I believe, isn't it? Yep, I think so. So that starting unit played six and a half minutes. Now bringing in some fresh legs. So Miller, half a step behind Buggage. So that'll be his second, third team foul of the half. This is the only time that Tabor will play the Braves this year. Good block by McClure. Can't come away with the rebound though. Good defense there, good help by James Aboba. And there we see some of those yeah. springs in the he feet of Miller, up. wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, he got up. So drive there by number 25, Fields. Fouls on table number two, Jack Both. That's his first. So Both picks up his four. first foul. Blue Jays up 14, going to seal it, send Fields to the line. First one up and in is Himmert, going to replace 
Both. Just under 13 to go. Blue Jays up 13, 55, 42. Nice crowd here on a Wednesday evening. Cold weather outside. Checking in for all of number 15, Cameron Woods. Klumpenmaker with the foul, as his first foul, as we see Fields back in, just a short breather. He replaced Hibbett. So Miller inbounds for Blue Jays. Proctor thought about the deep three, pulls up. That's going to be short. I think that was blocked, or it's going to be off of Hemmert. Proctor thought he was hit on the hand. Just shot that one short. The bucket by Hoff, no good. Proctor out to Miller. Miller on the far wing looking for a screen from Hemmert. Now at the Proctor, Boba now on the top. He's gonna go, nice move by James. You know, when James lets the game come to him and really slows down a little bit, he's really good. Great block right there. So turnover by the Braves seems to be the story. Hemmer with a strong move, the basket right to the Braves, and that puts the Blue Jays up 16. If we get a stop here and get this to 18 or 19, it'd be big for the Blue Jays. And instead, they get a three to cut it right back to 13. Hemmert for three off the Miller pass, no good, but Cade with the rebound, that's gonna be the Tabor ball. That's, they should go check that if they can. That, that was definitely off the Braves. His official underneath was kind of behind and didn't see that. Didn't get any help. Nonetheless, Braves ball, 59-46. We can't leave him open, and that's the reason. They're going to signal they're going to come check that later at a dead ball, I believe. They think it was a three, but they're going to check it and see. Pull-up jumper by Miller, good, and that's, that's his game. A lot of players have lost that part of the game, the pull-up jumper, and Miller excels at it. Braves staying right in it, down 11. So Tabor had the 16 point lead and now it's back down to 11 with 10 to go. Aboba for three, and no good. Rebound Crane, quick spin move. Try and go to the bucket, we need to swing it around. Aboba thought there was an opening there and it closed quickly. So the turnover now gives the ball back to Ottawa. Call a foul. Fouls on the Blue Jays, number 11, Cade Hemmer. That's his second. Team We're going to have a review here of that three point shot. They called a three by Ottawa. So we're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a minute. Don't let flashy ads and short term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. 
TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. And it looks like they're leaving the score at 6150. So I'm assuming that I thought he signaled two, but maybe he was just telling, remind him we're going to shoot two free throws. As it looks like they're going to leave that as a three. Obviously, we can't see that from up here where we're at. That's why we have the review down there. So officials have determined it was a three. So now Ottawa down to ten. So a little bit of a dangerous area for the Blue Jays right here. If he makes his free throw, they got, they got that mental part of it's not double digits anymore. Hey, it's just three possessions. And they do just that. So bring it to nine, 61-52. That ball's blocked out of bounds. Holcomb coming in now for Aboba. Foul on number 25, Fields. Foul on Ottawa's number 25, Emil Fields. This is going to be his, his first, first, so both will go to the line to shoot Jack two. Shooting two. First one no good, so both will try to give us a. That's going to be a violation on Ottawa, but no problem. Both knocks it in, so Tabor back up 10. 9.30 to go here in the, in the ball game, at least in regulation. Good screen and roll defense by the Blue Jays. Third foul on Hemmert. McClure back on the floor for Tabor. Nine minutes to go, Tabor up 10. Coach wanting to be sure we get a good possession here. Crane short. That's probably not what we wanted. That possession was not a good one, Isaiah. We just didn't really get anything. The ball got stuck on that far side. Right. Leads down to eight, so this is this is as close as Ottawa's been the entire game because we got out big, you know. I mean, after the first couple minutes, once we established that lead, so Tabor needs to pick it back up offensively. Nice drive by Holcomb as he takes it to the rack, finishes it. Bucket's going to be good. We have a foul. On number twelve, uh, number 12 Ploppin Maker. As he's going to exit, as Anyang is going to come back in. And Proctor back on the floor for Caleb Crane. Holcomb to shoot one. Good free throw shooter, knocks it down. Tabor up 11. So good response there by the Blue Jays. After giving the double digit lead up to eight, bounce right back with a three point play. Deep three by Buggage, and that's good. So right back to eight with eight to go.
And this game is really critical because if it comes down to a tied record with only playing one time, whoever wins is going to get the right. record, going to get the head-to-head. -head. And that ball is just... And I think that one should go to Ottawa. I think we knocked that one out. So we're even after the one, the one they missed a minute ago. So so Thatcher McClure with a bucket from the Miller assist puts the Blue Jays back up ten. You watch Miller defend on the post. He's going to fight it like crazy, but Buggage says no need. He's going to knock down a three. So we're going to have to start guarding Buggage a little closer than that. He pulls it right now. It's going in. Deep three by Voth, that's off the front of the rim. Rebound by Inyang. So 67-60. You watch the Ottawa players, they're really good about clearing with that off arm right before the bat, right before they get to the basket. They've done that all night long. They're really good about just bumping you enough to where it gives them a little bit of space. So we'll see how that plays out. 67-62, Blade Jays up five, 6-12 to go. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. And we're back with you. And uh, Isaiah, the Braves have just fought and fought and fought. Now this is a five-point game. So now Tabor's has to really pick it back up. Yeah. Yeah. Proctor for three, just off a little bit. So Ottawa clears away, just under six to go. Tabor really needs to find a way to get a stop here. That's not the guy you want to leave open, but he did miss that one. So McClure going to the basket. And he draws a little contact, but misses. Got a little switch and put Proctor on Buggage, maybe a little bit longer person, maybe to bother him a little bit. And Crane tried to squeeze that one in. It was a little bit straight line pass. Boy, they're going for the alley-oop, and Kenyon just saved a, a dunk. Second. Team seven. 
Kimber Woods in the line, shooting one. So 67, 64. Tabor's been stuck on 67 for a while. Blue Jays are going to have to find a way to score. Now it's a two-point game. So Braves have battled almost all the way back and have the momentum. See if this young Blue Jay team can withstand the, the blow here. They were still dry from the field. Crane up on Buggies now. He's not letting him have it anywhere right now. Fields, no good. Board by McClure. And we're going to have a foul. Woods picks up Wood. his second. second. Yeah, second. Six. Tabor really needs a bucket. 421 to go up by two. It's kind of been the theme of the day, Isaiah. Our JV did this, and then our uh, varsity women did the same thing. Got a lead, let Ottawa come all the way back. So uh, the men hopefully will hold form and still win as both turns it over. Nice pick there by Fields. That's going to be an offensive foul. Good job by Crane. Player control foul on the Ottawa number 25, Emil Fields. You see the replay That's right here. Seven. Crane Team seven. definitely just standing there. So good job by Caleb drawing that charge. Let's see if that sparks the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays offense has gotten a little stagnant here the last several minutes. We got a tie ball game. Tabor with another turnover. So Tabor all the way back, or Ottawa all the way back to knock this game up. 3.30 to go. Earlier it was Otto with the turnovers. Now it seems like it's Tabor. Right. But Proctor with a great response. Good start there. So 70-67, and the Blue Jays take a timeout. We'll take it with them. Be back in just a minute. Hillsboro's TCW team is proud to work for you. Our local service and support teams bring the best for fast and reliable TCW internet right here in Hillsboro. Working closely with residents and business owners, we help find the best solutions for all your needs. You simply can't beat our local customer service, always ensuring a connection to work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. Don't let flashy ads and short-term specials with fine print entice you into hidden charges and slower speeds for your broadband. Work seamlessly, stream continuously, and game uninterrupted. TCW is the only provider that offers Hillsboro the reliability of an underground fiber connection to your home or business. Switch today to experience the best with TCW Fiber Internet. And we're back. So a big three-pointer there by Proctor. Gets Tabor off the 67 as it was 67 for a long time. And uh, Ottawa come all the back and tie it up. And Proctor with a big three. And a timeout, we'll see defensively what the Blue Jays do. Looking for a back door, nothing there. Good defense by Proctor. That's off of the Braves and two Tabor. It's a good defense by the Blue Jays. Forces another Ottawa turnover. So Tabor, just under three to go, has the ball up three. 
We see Fields getting ready to check back in for the Blue Jays. I wouldn't look for any, any subs from Tabor the rest of the way unless they have to. I don't know how both got that to go in. It looked like he was stumbling, falling down. All of a sudden, it come up off the backboard. Nonetheless, we'll take it. Good play by Jack to put us up five. So Tabor. And Yang is the same thing. I, I just don't get the push-offs. You know, it's clear as day. So it's a little hard to play defense when that, when that happens. But nonetheless, it's a 30-second timeout. We're going to keep it here. Again, as I mentioned earlier, Ottawa, Sterling, Bethel, Evangel all sitting at 5-5. Five and five, Tied for fifth in the conference. York at four and five, Friends four and six, Tabor four and six. Tabor does right now have the win over Friends, so they would be ahead of them. York did defeat Tabor here in overtime earlier in the year. Probably the, the really the loss Tabor shouldn't have had. Uh, we could have won at Bethel, but uh, you know we just didn't get it done there. But the York game we should have won here at home, so we're gonna have to try to go up to York later and steal that game. But for right now. We just need to worry about Ottawa. Up three, 2.05 to go. They say he pushed him out. There we go. Good play. I thought we was going to throw it out of bounds there. But Woods with the push. Caleb threw that just where only Thatcher could get it. But about to ran him out of bounds, too. So we kind of caught a break there. So McClure be at the line shooting one and one. He's the one, too, the other night when we had that game here against McPherson. Made a couple of free throws. Him and Proctor both at the end. So that was huge. So, And that one goes out. So four-point lead for Tabor. 152 to go. Crane on Buggage. We can't let Buggage get loose. Now Proctor switches quickly. A good job by Jake. Well, this is a tough shot. Tough shot by Buggage. So two point lead for Tabor. Running everything off that high post area. Crane calling for a screen from McClure. Holcomb for three, it's good. So Kenyon Holcomb with a big three, 102. And the Blue Jays want a timeout. So we're gonna keep it here. And we'll let you uh, enjoy some of the cheerleaders and the band here as uh, Give them a little recognition here. There we go. We're gonna let you enjoy some of the cheerleaders in our band and be back in just a minute. And back with you here, Tabor up 76-71. Big three-pointer by Kenyon Holcomb right in front of the Blue Jay bench. And that puts Tabor back up by five. Buggy's just trying to get to the rim, and that's just too easy. 
too easy. We're going to keep it here again, the 30 seconds up, and now it's going to be a full timeout. We're going to go ahead and keep it here again. Um, go ahead and highlight our cheerleaders in our band if our cheerleaders get back out there again. We have a lot of timeouts here. We'll be back in a minute. And we're back with you here with 55.9 seconds left. Proctor going to inbound it for the Blue Jays, gets it over to Crane. It's a one possession game. One and one both ways right now. Now 15 on the shot clock. That's not that. That should hit the rim. That should reset. So we're going to review that. Correction. Official timeout. For those of you that may not know, uh, we do have replay in our conference. And so we have a system set up where the cameras up in the ceiling will show pretty much the entire half of the court. They get you know, several feet behind the three-point line. We can uh, get the time, the shot clock, since that's both on our backboard, everything in the one shot. We can zoom that in. We can uh, move it a little bit, um, a lot of different things. So right now, um, they're going to go and be sure that hit the rim. That ball did hit the rim, so it should reset to 20 seconds. Now the other thing is we actually might have to time down there. Um, from when that hit the rim to when we had it to when the shot clock went off um, and then get the shot clock at the right time. So that ball did hit the rim. We should be able to tell that on the... And it's going to be 20. But it's going to be... They did put 26.9, and that's part of why you have to have everything in the picture because they can see when it hit, what the clock should be at, And Ottawa's wanting the ball in the corner. That's not actually about where they is. Is about where it should have been. So they're going to put Eng Yang on the ball, the longest, most athletic person they got. And that's out of bounds. So we have a timeout. Blue Jays, 26.3. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. So we'll stay here once again. So a nice job by this officiating crew to get that right, going over there and seeing exactly. Uh, now I'm not, not sure what they're checking. They're probably checking the time right now. But Tabor did call the timeout, but they can go over there and review. So officials done a nice job this evening of using the replay when needed. We didn't want to put that in and use it all the time and really delay the game, Isaiah, but, but we do get it right. So it looks like they're going to leave everything. They, oh, they, were, they did check on who it was off of, which is good this time. You want to be sure you get it right. And Tabor just throws it away. Couldn't get it in. Buggage over there with a three. No good. 
that definitely could have been a foul. And they're going to probably come review that one. And the official says he's not going to, as he's going to say, I clearly saw it that way. If they want to use a timeout, they can do that. But if they review it and they're wrong, they're going to lose a timeout. So this, is, this isn't a review, it's more of a challenge. So we'll check it out. Could be an interesting last 17.5. So what, what's, what's your opinion? Should we have that in baseball? You know, everybody says baseball is the purest game, and we do, but we have it in the majors now. And right, So right. What, should we have that in college? Um, I do think it's important. Um, I know that in the, uh, in the SEC and the Big 12, they allow you to um, challenge certain things through video. Right. Um, I do think that's important to uh, just maintain the integrity of the game. But if you take it all away, you know, then it's no longer the, the same game. Right. Well, right here, and it's got to be indisputable to oh, overturn yeah, it. 100%. And right here, we just saw the replay. It went at normal game speed, so it's hard to tell. But it, it looked like it may have been off the Tabor guy, but it looked like it could have off Ang, Ang Yong as well. I just couldn't tell by that faft up here. That's the beauty of the one we have down there. They can really slow it down and flip it around. And we do have the ability to run that replay from our studio. We just saw and really slow it down. But we don't have the ability to, to move, the, move it around like they do down there. So... 76-73, Blue Jays trying to hold on here. They had a big lead the first half, a double-digit lead most of the second half, as we're going to see it again right here. As that comes, that is actually that is off of Ann Young. It was a good yeah, job by our people up in the booth yeah. of the replay. They slowed that down, and that definitely went off his shoulder. So that should be Tabor Ball. I do think there should be a limit. I was on part of the crew that talked about should we put replay in not being the AD and one of the ADs in the conference. And some of the, excuse me, some of the points we had were we don't want it to be used all the time. We're not trying to drag the game out. Um, but we need to be sure to get it right. But also, we don't want to take all day. You know, my suggestion was, look, if, you, if you're there in a minute and you can't figure it out, go with what the call is, whichever way, and just go. So... I think he's saying, though, he's not charging Ottawa a timeout. I think that's what uh, Jake, our head official here, just said. Uh, I believe. Maybe not, but I think that's what he said. So now we've got a spot throw. Jump ball to Ottawa, so 14.3. That's the only thing is I don't like about running people back to the ball in a short court like that. Because now you're, you're kind of pinned in. I always like the deep ball there. You know, run people up, flip them around and run somebody deep and throw it. Uh, everybody in the backcourt's a little bit congested at times. Um, but Coach Warren knows his team better than me and what their strengths are. So I see the Blue Jays break the huddle. You know, here's a deal where uh, do you foul so you don't give them the three-pointer? That's always the question. I'm never a fan of that. Uh, just because if they throw something up and the official determines he was in the act of shooting, you know, I've just, I guess I've always been, let's play, play the game. Yeah. But that's my preference. Buggies is right out there, close to where the ball is. Mm -hmm. 
because of that reason right there. You know, they may have thrown it away. Caleb almost had it. Now you're down to 2.6. And coaches were wondering if we should review it. And they asked Caleb, was that off you? And he said, yeah. So we don't want to review there. But uh, now with 2.6, if they throw it inside right away, maybe you do foul. Yeah. Boy, that's a good job by Kenyon to, you know, to really make him shoot over our longest, tallest guy. So, a great game by the Blue Jays to hold on there to end. That just shows Isaiah this young team is coming around. Yeah, they did a really good job tonight. I think being more consistent from start to finish. It definitely looks like their team chemistry is getting better. You know, that puts the Blue Jays tied with Ottawa right now and possibly tied with Sterling, Bethel, and a bunch of them. We're going to take just a minute break. We'll come back and wrap it up. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. And we're back with you here at Tabor College as uh, the Blue Jays come away with a 76-73 win. Other KCAC scores, um, Oklahoma Wesleyan over Friends, 92-61. Kansas Wesleyan won at Sterling, 70-54. McPherson won up at Avila, 72-61. Bethany, a two-point win at York, 72-70. Not a tough, not an easy place to win. So right now it looks like that whole mess in the middle, Ottawa drops to five and six, Sterling drops to five and six, and Bethel drops to five and six. Tabor improves to five and six. York drops to four and six, Friends four and seven. So right now Oklahoma Wesleyan and Kansas Wesleyan leading the conference at 10 and one, Southwestern at nine and two, McPherson at seven and three. And then you've got four Tied for fifth place. No, Evangel moves to six and five, so they're going to be fifth. So tied for sixth with this win is Ottawa, Sterling, Bethel, and Tabor. So right now moved clear up into the tie for sixth place, Isaiah. So we're looking at, uh, um, you know, what where where can we go from here? So Isaiah, what's your takeaway on the uh, from the game tonight? Um, I think the boys did a really good job of, of taking advantage of Ottawa not being ready um, out of the gate. And um, I think with that being, I think their fourth game in a row. Um, 
I think that's really good for their momentum and their team chemistry, especially um, having three or four other teams with that same uh, record in conference. I think it's really important that they're on a streak. Well, that's it for us tonight. Tabor again pulls out the 76-73 win. And thanks for joining us. And the Blue Jays will be back in action this Saturday up in Leavenworth to take on St. Mary again, who dropped – no, yeah, who dropped – the game tonight uh, to Southwestern. So hopefully Tabor can keep it rolling and keep moving up the standings and get into that conference tournament. And once again, thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. We'll see you next week. See you later. Marzicek is exceptional at his uh, vertical defending. He kicks that one off and fits.